What if I told you that you could calculate pi, one of the most famous irrational numbers in the history of mathematics, using no irrational numbers at all? No calculus, no keeping track of long-running decimals, just simple integer arithmetic. Well, stay tuned, because in this video, we'll learn how it all works. Hello everyone, my name is Mike and you're watching Polymath Unlimited. For thousands of years, Pi has captured the interest of mathematicians around the globe. The earliest known attempts to calculate Pi date from as early as ancient Babylon and Egypt. Through the ages we have gotten better and better at calculating Pi to higher and higher precision, using more and more advanced algorithms. Today's supercomputers are able to calculate Pi to hundreds of trillions of digits something ancient mathematicians could only dream of. However, you don't need a supercomputer or any fancy complicated algorithms to calculate pi to high precision. For all its incomprehensible complexity, there is a shockingly simple algorithm that can calculate pi to any precision we want by repeating just a few simple steps. The algorithm goes like this. We start with a row of fractions, beginning with 1, then 1 third, 2 fifths, 3 sevenths, 4 ninths, and so on. The longer our list of fractions, the more digits of pi we can calculate. Next, under each fraction we write down a 2, then repeat the following. First, multiply all our numbers by 10. Then, beginning from the right, we divide each number by the denominator of its corresponding fraction, producing a quotient and a remainder. We replace the number with the remainder, and then we take the quotient, multiply it by the numerator of the fraction, then add that result to the next number on the left. We keep doing this from right to left until we reach the leftmost column. Once we reach the leftmost column, that number divided by 10 will be a digit of pi. We then discard all but the ones digit of that column. Using just 13 columns, we can generate the first four digits of pi. In general, to calculate n digits, you need 10n over 3 columns. What is truly remarkable about this algorithm is that it uses only integer arithmetic. That is, you don't need to keep track of long-running decimals like most other algorithms used to compute pi. This makes this algorithm very simple and easy to translate into computer code. But what is even more remarkable is why this algorithm works. This algorithm was first presented in 1995 by researchers Stanley Rabinowitz and Stan Wagon. In their paper, they describe a mixed radix representation for pi. A radix is simply the base of a number system. For example, a radix 10 representation of a number can be constructed as an infinitely nested expression. If we allow a different radix at each stage of the expression, then we can get some very interesting things to happen. For example, using this infinite series for pi, we can construct pi in a mixed radix representation where all of pi's digits are 2. Our algorithm then simply needs to convert this mixed radix number into base 10. If we interpret the fractions in the columns we are using in the algorithm as bases, we can see that the progressive multiplication by 10, then dividing and shifting, is in fact performing this base transformation. This is why this algorithm really does give us the digits of pi. In their paper, Rabinowitz and Wagon gave a version of their algorithm implemented in Pascal code. I have translated that algorithm into C++ code, which you can see here. One interesting thing to watch out for when using this algorithm is that sometimes we get 10 as a digit. Obviously 10 is not a valid digit, however we can adjust for this by simply carrying the 1 generated by that 10 to the next digit to the left. We do however need to handle cases where the digit to the left is a 9. This switch statement handles these cases efficiently. Here is that program calculating the first 10,000 digits of pi.
Another interesting thing about this algorithm is that because we are simply transforming pi from one base to another, we can just transform pi into a different base that is more convenient. For example, if we want to compute more digits of pi more quickly, we could simply transform pi into a base that is a power of 10, for example, base 1000. This will generate three digits of pi at a time, and we can see that it still works wonderfully. I have tested this approach for bases up to 1 billion, and have successfully calculated up to 1 million digits of pi using this approach. The main trade-off with this approach is that higher base values mean that we need more precision in our integers to make the intermediate calculations. In my code, I have all of my integers as unsigned 64-bit integers, which seems to work fine in my case. Now, we're certainly not breaking any records here. This algorithm takes about 45 minutes to compute a million digits of pi on my laptop. There are other algorithms out there that can do the same calculations in only a couple of minutes. But to me, there is something truly beautiful and elegant about the simplicity of this approach. There are even some versions of this exact algorithm that have been condensed into just a few lines of C code. While this might not be the fastest algorithm out there, I hope that its simplicity and elegance inspires you to look for simple solutions to complex problems. If you can think of any further optimizations we can make to this algorithm, or if you know of any other elegant algorithms for computing Pi, be sure to leave them down in the comments. Until next time, happy coding and thank you for watching.